Hey everybody, so um, I posted a picture uh, about a week ago on Facebook of me doing some nickel plating and it had quite a bit of interest in it. So I figured that I would make a video of uh, how I copper and nickel plate uh, parts for motorcycles, cars, whatever, anything steel works good. Uh, you can't use this process on aluminum, aluminum is a lot more tricky and I don't have the stuff to do that. So um, here's kind of a, this is gonna be kind of a breakdown of what I do for copper and nickel plating. So we're well, gonna need a couple things. You're gonna need some still white vinegar, table salt. Um, I use rubber gloves. Um, and then you're either gonna need a nickel anode or a copper anode for whatever you're doing. The nickel is kind of hard to get because you can't just find it everywhere like you can with copper. You can go to any hardware store and get it. Uh, I got this off Amazon, 10 bucks, pretty cheap. I got a couple of them. They last for a while and they do really well. So what I do for this, so I got, here's my copper set up and then I'm plating something in the nickel right now. Uh, a couple other things you're gonna need, something to disturb the solution. I use a little fish tank aerator that I got at Walmart. I don't remember how much it was. I got it about a year ago. Um, works really well. All it does is just make sure that there's no air bubbles um, sticking to the thing that you're plating. You're gonna need a power source. Um, a lot of people spend a lot of money on power sources. I use just a little guy, that, uh, or I stole this one off of an old baby monitor that wasn't being used anymore. Uh, you need something roughly three to six volts. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but it works for me. So this is six volt. I spliced in some alligator clips for the positive or negative. You hook up your anode, which will be either the copper or the nickel to the positive side, and then whatever you're plating to the negative side. Um, the solution has to be hot, so what I do, since I don't have a heater for it, is I boil it, and then I pour it in, and then I start plating. So what I will do when I'm plating something is, um, you gotta clean it up. So I, this was greasy and rusty, so I sandblasted it. And then after you clean it, to get a good finish, you're gonna wanna polish it. So I polish this, it's just, just polished steel right now and then you plate it. And when I'm nickel plating, what I will do, nickel and copper plating, realistically, what I'll do is I will copper plate whatever I'm plating because when it's polished, um, you, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the nickel and just the polished steel. So what I'll do, because of that, so that I can make sure that I got a good coat or a good thick nickel plate on whatever I'm plating is I'll copper plate it and then I will nickel plate it. And then if I'm going to copper plate whatever I'm plating, then I'll copper plate it again. The reason I do it like that is because um, the nickel builds up a lot more than the copper. So it can fill like little imperfections or whatever. So you can nickel plate it then polish it and then copper plate it and it'll give you a really good finish. Um, you're supposed to, when you clean it, or before you plate it, you're supposed to etch it with like sulfuric acid or something like that. Um, I don't wanna deal with those kind of chemicals. So I just clean before I plate with some soap and some hot water and then I plate it. And I think it turns out pretty good and it's tough, it stays on. So that's what I do. Not what a lot of people would recommend, but it works. So if you wanna do it, give it a shot. It's kind of fun seeing old junky parts turn into something nice and new again. Thanks for watching.